Is the UK ready to walk away with a no deal unless the EU gets real over Brexit? Four prominent voices from the world of business and politics are meeting with the EU chief negotiator Michel Barnier today to answer that question. They all join me now, MEP Stephen Wolfe, ex-CBI head Lord Digby Jones, Labour Leave Chairman John Mills and former British Chamber of Commerce Chief John Longworth. Now Stephen, let's start with you, Stephen Wolfe, I should say. In terms of the momentum behind this, what do you see as the fundamental aim of today? I think there are three key aims. One is to make sure that Barnier understands that there is an iron will to continue and make sure that Brexit actually happens and those who are trying to delay, deny or damage Brexit will fail. The second point is to offer a hand of friendship to those in the European Union to say that we're seeking to get a good deal. But thirdly, and more importantly, if there is no good deal which includes services in the free trade arrangement, then we mustn't be frightened of leaving without a deal, having a no deal and working on WTO trade deals. And of course the element of the WTO trade deals, we all go down the hard Brexit route, it's going to be apocalyptic, it's going to be the end of the world. Uh, in terms of uh, that John Longworth, you know, do you see that as a credible you know, you know, proposition that it's going to be somehow massively uh, negative. It's, you know, there's no point even considering it because it's just that bad. No, it's absolutely nonsense that it would be that bad. You know, I, I co-chair an organisation called Leave Means Leave, which represents a wide business community. It has some of the top business people in the UK involved in it. And we are absolutely convinced, along with our economists, that the UK will do well whether or not we have a trade deal with the European Union, provided we maintain our freedoms to uh, manage the economy in a way that we want to. Obviously, a trade deal with the European Union would be helpful, particularly to the European Union, if they want access to the UK market. But the fact of the matter is that the UK can do well even without a trade deal. What do you make of the lines coming out from someone like Michel Barnier, particularly on, let's say, <coughs> passporting, financial services, which is very much at a distance. There is going to be no real cooperation, it seems, on rights of passporting and, and in terms of financial service, the financial service sector. Is that fundamentally a poor position for the EU to be going down, for Mr Barnier to be going down? It's a very poor position for the EU because London is Europe's banker. London, of course, is a major financial centre for the world. But the fact of the matter is that the EU governments and businesses need to access the deep and wide capital markets in, the, in London, in the City of London, the expertise that's there, the legal system and so on. So it's actually very important for the EU that access to those markets is available. And, you know, only 9% of the city's activity has any association with passporting whatsoever, which is a very small proportion of the UK economy. And is that something you're going to be reminding Mr Barnier in your meeting a little Absolutely. later on? Absolutely. <laughs> um, Lord Digby-Jones, in terms of the context around this, obviously there have been several meetings Mr Barnier has had, some of whom from people like Nick Clegg, people like Tony Blair, all of whom perhaps will go with a message which is starkly different from what you're going to be putting yeah. forward to, to him. Have you been concerned about the echo chamber effect, perhaps, well, of these negotiations? Uh, it's not about what I'm concerned. It's about what, firstly, 18 million people are concerned who actually voted one way. But secondly, so many small businesses who I am in touch with around the country who are absolutely fed up with what I would call the ABC faction, which is Adonis Blair Clegg. And, and they think they speak for the country. And I, I really, their arrogance, it takes my breath away, which is, at the end of the day, there's a type of tyranny in this. <laughs> where they're basically saying, no, 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 we speak for it. And, of course, because they are public figures with, with, with good quality service track records, what they are is getting access. They get airtime. They get in to see people like Barnier. And, therefore, I'm worried that people like Michel Barnier think that they speak for Britain. They do not. And I would much rather, and I hear this so often from businesses around the country, I, I would much rather people... Was, saying to business, of Britain, David Davis was saying to, uh, to business, we're going to start with no deal. And it's now for Michel Barnier to come to us and say, what do you see a trade deal like? Because as an unemployed kid in Athens today, there's a single mum in Madrid today who needs a job. And the only way they're really going to get a job is if wealth is created. And the only way you're going to create wealth is international trade. And the biggest, best trade deal I can think that Germany could make is with the United Kingdom. Now, on that basis, Mr Barnier, please put the politics aside on this and start looking after the 520 million of the EU 28 
which we are at the moment, to make sure that the trade deal with your biggest trading partner and ours works a treat. That is where I'd like to start. And what would you say if he came back and said, look, I, I hear your voice, but mm. your voice is one of the many I've heard. Sure, sure. And I've heard a former Prime Minister come, I've heard yeah. a former Deputy Prime Minister come yeah. to my door, and they've said something completely different sure. from you. So why should I take your word for it when I could listen to those people? I don't think it's about whether they take word, because I'm representative of, of businesses, but not officially. And by the way, Tony Blair hasn't got a job. <laughs> so, as far as I understand it, he is no more representative than me. He is expressing a personal view, and thank God we live in a world where he can. I'm very pleased about that. But, but he's given too much day, weight, is that it, Too much weight. And I know why. He's a former Prime Minister, and, and he's got access that I could never dream of having. But, by the way, he shouldn't abuse that access when you think that there's a small business sitting in... Small businesswoman sitting in Newcastle tonight, employing 20 people, house on the line. What she's after is a trade deal, Mr Blair. She's not after trying to say, this is all up in the air for two years while I try and destroy the whole thing and adapt a tyranny against the will of the people. I mean, John Mills, obviously you're from Labour Leave. Yes, that's right. From a party which is fairly ambiguous about actually what it wants out of Brexit, or indeed whether it wants Brexit. One of the moment, men, uh, reasons you're coming here, one of the momentum behind it, is to represent the 52% of the people, some of whom obviously will come from uh, the Labour constituencies, be Labour supporters, historic Labour supporters, who voted Leave. How are you going to convey that message to Mr Barnier uh, in the meeting? Well, I think there's some important statistics that uh, really bear this out very strongly. I mean, in one more generally, not just with Labour people, was uh, published recently showing that 48% uh, of the population are strongly supporting Brexit, 39% uh, are against at the moment, 13% uh, undecided. But, I mean, that's a big majority in favour of uh, pressing on and getting the Brexit out of the way. But if you look at the Labour side of things, uh, the last election, uh, nearly 40% of Labour voters in the previous general election voted for leave. And I think there's a real problem in the Labour Party, which is that the parliament, uh, parliamentary representations we've got, the Labour MPs, don't really represent the views of large numbers of working people and essentially Labour voters it's throughout the country. Point. It's an interesting because, <coughs> again, in terms of the, uh, the Labour Party as a whole, if you were to, as, as I'm sure you did, as I did, go to party conference, for example, and you, you heard the mood of the, the conventions and the fringe events, it was all dominated by a Remain attitude and the assumption that everyone who is, supports Labour is leaving. Saying fundamentally, as, is, as with a number of the country, you're going to be saying to Mr. Barney, there is a large number of people who are simply not being represented by the two parties and the Jeremy Corbyn and Theresa May who are coming to you and giving you uh, representation. I, I think that's right. Just again to give you another example, I mean, we sent out a tweet to the, the, the Labour Leave uh, supporters yesterday, uh, and we had 2,000 people coming back to us overnight. Uh, with views that needed to be expressed to Mr Barnier this afternoon. I mean, there's a tremendously strong feeling uh, among Labour supporters that uh, a very su substantial proportion of them anyway, that we want to get on with Brexit, make a success of it, stay friends with Europe, but get it done. And, you know, it's interesting, when this news of this visit by us came out, I've had loads and loads of, of communication from various places saying, please tell Mr Barnier the quicker we can get out, the better for everybody, including Europe. But one was from a German entrepreneur in Dusseldorf. He's just invested 75 million euros of his own money, not threat and take me, in northwest England into a facility that he's doing because Britain's coming out of the EU so that he can use Britain as a gateway to the world as opposed to a gateway out of Germany. Now, if you add the people John was talking about to this sort of guy who's got nothing to do with the British economy at the we speak, there is a, there is a, a reservoir of hidden, unrepresented people who've had enough and the quicker we get this done, I would submit, it's, it, you, EU wants to move on, doesn't it? The EU wants to move on with all its challenges over the next 10 years, and so does the United Kingdom. And I think we're here to say, come on, let's get it done. But by the way, Mr Barnier, we're starting with, we're coming out, no deal. Now, tell me how you can persuade me we ought to do a deal. I mean, Stephen, one thing that you've, you've been quoted as saying is, is this is the start of a leave fight back. And obviously, you're coming here, and indeed you all are, because you're in some way concerned or worried about where the negotiations are in terms of a deal, in terms of the momentum uh, from the UK. 
what, when you say leave fight back, what do you mean? Because the assumption there is that the government is not being strong enough with the EU and is allowing them to some extent to exude an arrogance and perhaps take the mick in terms of sufficient progress, in terms of uh, the, what they're suggesting the future arrangements will look like. I think they'll probably not be allowed to say take the mick anymore. To be honest, with someone from an Irish background, <laughs> we'd enjoy that. But of course, there has been a strong attitude from lots of people. And Digby's talked about the ABCs here of those who have tried to delay, deny and damage Brexit. It. And, and I think one of the, the important parts that we have to say is that this cross-party group of people who are looking at left and right and centre, that in covers business, is a challenge to that narrative. And when we talk about the Labour uh, the kind of leave movement fight back, just before Christmas there was a petition to leave the European Union being presented to that, the, 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 the Commons on a no-deal basis. That reached 100,000 within a few days of us launching that and getting that out. Today, we've seen others coming out to the European Parliament. We've had our meeting. At the weekend, there are a number of meetings across the country. I'm speaking at one on, on Sunday in London, where there's going to be rallies to suggest that the Leave movement is not over and that they will not have it. The Remainers will not have it their own way throughout 2018. This is not a battle that has been lost by the Leavers. It's a battle that's being lost by the Remainers and they should wake up and recognise that in order to support Britain, jobs and a thriving economy, leave their past battles behind, get behind the government, get a good deal and then we'll move forward. The here, majority here. of former Remainers that I meet, particularly in the business community, now just want to get on and do the deal of leaving. You know, leave means leave has 90,000 supporters and we actually reach 2 million people every day on social media. It's a huge movement to leave the European Union. And would you Union. say it's being un unrepresented in terms of the way the Brexit negotiations and the momentum and the mood uh, in terms of the country from the media is being portrayed? Do you think that these, un these people, these millions of people who are engaged in the Leave movement... Well, of course, this is a UK problem. You know, the metropolitan elite, uh, the, the Westminster bubble in the UK represent uh, often the views of the people within that bubble. And, will you and say the that's media Mr. are part of that, of course. Well, well, we have to say it to Mr Barney. We have to actually be honest and say that there's a huge issue of a debate within the UK. And it's not for Barnier to necessarily resolve that, but it is in the interests of the European Union and the people of the European Union that they make it possible for the UK to smoothly leave the European Union quickly and to settle these matters in the interests of all parties. Have you, have you noticed, if you look at the propaganda sheet that used to be known as the Financial Times, and on the front page, which I always thought was a paragon of neutral reporting on the front page, any bit of good UK economic news starts with the words, despite Brexit. If you ever listen to the BBC, any bit of good economic news starts with the words, despite Brexit. And by the way, I exaggerate to make the point, and I'm sure they'll give me instances where that hasn't happened. But the concept is that they create this atmosphere that for some reason we're all going to hell in a handbasket if we don't give in. And I want, I want Monsieur Barnier this afternoon to understand we are all on the same side here. We need a trade deal for the good of Europe. He needs a trade deal for the good of Europe. We need a trade deal for the good of Britain, and so does he. And I want to stop the antagonism, which is the polemic of yes and no. This should be coming together and actually saying, how can we quickly, to give stability, get into a trade deal that helps that unemployed kid in Athens as much as it helps the woman in Newcastle on time? But if I, we can't, I, I think if we... that's right, if I may say so. I mean, I think one of the problems that we've got is that we, <clears throat> the people like Blair and Adonis give the impression that we're so desperate to stay in the single market and the customs union that we weaken our negotiating position in Brussels. And I think there's a real danger that the European Union will overestimate the problems in Brexit and the determination of the British people to go through with it all and we'll finish up with a standoff which we don't really need. It'd be far better to come to a reasonable agreement recognising from their perspective how strong the feeling in Absolutely. Britain really is. Absolutely. The fact is. we have a yes. fifth column in the UK who are trying to undermine the government's negotiating position doesn't mean that the EU should underestimate the determination of the UK to leave and that actually no trade deal is better than a bad trade deal. The UK will do very well outside the European Union 
with or without a trade deal. OK, before you all then head off to the European Commission to see Mr Barney, I'll just take each one of you, if you were to, when, we get, when you get to this meeting and, you, and you, you'll speak to Mr Barney, the one thing, the one sentence you want to say to him to reinforce your each individual message, perhaps Stephen will start with you, what is the one thing you want to get across to Mr Barney today? That he agrees that Brexit, it means Brexit, it will happen and there'll be no turning back. John Mills that it's hugely in the EU's interest to do a reasonable deal with us and not to try and drive such a hard bargain that in the end it all falls apart. Lord Digby Jones? That services has to be part of that deal and Monsieur Barnier cannot cherry pick this and financial services has to be within the trade deal. That so. it's in everybody's interest to reach a swift conclusion that we need for the certainty of business across Europe to have clarity either way by the summer.